Hello everyone, this is Barry Dahl, teaching and learning advocate at D2L. Forty years ago, I was a master's student at ASU when the accounting department chair asked if I was interested in teaching a couple of classes. Over the Christmas break, I prepped to teach management accounting to a bunch of people only a couple of years younger than myself. That started my career in education. After 17 years teaching accounting, I gave up my tenure to become a college administrator. Yeah, don't do that. In 2003, I chaired the committee in the Minnesota State System that chose D2L as the LMS for 37 campuses in the state. In 2012, I took a job at D2L. So my 18 years of experience with D2L is a 50-50 split between customer and employee. The first place I ever taught was on the tennis courts in Cheyenne, Wyoming. For me, teaching has always been a rewarding experience. If it isn't rewarding for you, you're doing it wrong. No offense. A favorite quote, a good teacher is like a candle, consuming itself to light the way for others. That was Miss Canfield, second grade teacher, episode one, Leave it to Beaver. Work long enough and the conversations circle back on themselves. The first pandemic year was interesting as many were pressed into online teaching for the first time. Many thought they discovered things that no one else was aware of. They didn't. No offense. If you're new to online teaching and learning, welcome. My suggestion is that you learn from those who have been doing it for over 20 years. They know some things. I've been in many conversations about what's the best course format. Fully on campus, fully online, or some hybrid approach. It's often suggested that we should limit offerings to that format which is best, such as this fake quote. Hybrid learning is the best of both worlds, so everything should be hybrid. No, don't be that person. The more types of offerings available, the more inclusive we are. For students who choose online courses, why do they do that? Lots of survey data suggests the answer. All of their top reasons have to do with flexibility, time flexibility to be specific. However, quality matters and the other course design standards never look at how much time flexibility you've built into your course, and yet it's critically important to student success. The words we use, the words we choose, they matter. Abraham Lincoln told the story of a boy who was asked how many legs his calf would have if he called his tail a leg. The boy replied, five, to which the prompt response was made that calling the tail a leg would not make it a leg. What we call things matters, so here's a reminder about what certain words mean. Student can be defined as a scholar, a learner, or observer, and can also be a trainee. Interaction is a mutual or reciprocal action. Best is defined as excelling all others. For those of us who grew up in the days of good, better, best, best is better than better, which is better than good. It's the best. I once engaged in a discussion on LinkedIn where the thread was started with this question. Why is it that higher education, especially universities, continually fail to acknowledge that students are customers? I answer with another question. Is there something not fulfilling enough about the word students? It's not broken. Don't try to fix it. They're students. Interactive learning is awesome, but saying that everything is interactive is not awesome. Hey, watch this interactive video, or these animated talking heads are so interactive. No, no they're not. You can't interact with an inanimate object. Animation does not equal interaction, and individual action is not interaction. Just stop it. For 20 years now, I've railed against the term best practices. It makes me crazy every time I hear this because the practices are not always good, let alone the best. Every time I hear the phrase best practices, I flip a little switch in my brain that converts the phrase into practices that don't totally suck. That's very different from best and certainly more accurate. I hated, yes hated, assigning grades, especially final grades, but really all grades. It felt like using a branding iron and saying, you're a C- student and you'll always be a C- student. That probably makes you a C- person. No, it doesn't. There are now many educators singing the praises of ungrading. Check them out and join in. Steve Jobs said, don't try to do everything. Do one thing well. Absolutely horrible advice. Let's say you're an aspiring teacher. Do one thing well. No, you must do lots of things well. Have you ever heard a sports announcer praise the one-tool baseball player? No, but a five-tool baseball player is very valuable. Do many things well. A former D2Ler penned a little ditty about the moose on her last day in the office. Credit to Cat W back in August 2018, and I quote, I have come to terms with the fact that no matter how angry, unintelligent, ugly, or brutish an animal is in real life, if you make it small and fuzzy, people will go ape for it. And that brings me to the end. My advice to you. Don't ever, for any reason, do anything for anyone, for any reason, ever, no matter what, no matter where, or who, or who you're with, or where you're going, or where you've been, ever, for any reason whatsoever. Michael Scott, Season 5, The Office. And one more from Michael Scott. Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope to find it along the way. Bye.